people used to the modeling world, they maybe felt more familiar in the beginning of this presentation and people that come from the embedded world, they will be very happy what Jörg was showing you. And I think the essential of, of Jörg's presentation is you target this established environment. So you get all these things. You get the certifications, you get all the tooling, you get the hardware in the loop simulation, you can buy the hardware from stock to deploy it, and so on and so on. That's really a, a, a big step uh, because if you ever try it, for example, you take a source code FMU and do that, you will go crazy. It's a lot of things and um, that's the point of EFMI that these expert tools plug in to this tool chain and then you can uh, rely on them. Okay, so very, very short, a uh, few more tools we didn't have time to present today but that exist and I want to mention them. The tools I will mention now, they are focused on this uh, software engineering part really. So let's say Autosar, basically also what Jörg was showing now. Uh, and these are two tools, the one is TPT, that's a test suite. So if you develop software for the uh, automotive industry, you know TPT most likely because that's a very, very established testing tool there. So TPT officially supports EFMI. And the second tool is uh, called Autosar Builder. So TPT is from Pike Tech, which have very recently been bought by Synopsys. And Autosar Builder, that's from Dassault. That's a software where you can pick a production code container. It doesn't have to be Cartier ASP, it could be any other production code container. And it generates you another production code container, binary code container, where this code is adapted for Autosar adaptive or for Autosar Classic. And then you can deploy it in your Autosar platforms. What Autosar Builder can also do, it can take these behavior model containers and generate from these test drivers. So it takes the behavior models and such a test driver you could either deploy on your target or you keep it uh, off, so to speak, and communicate via the CAN bus and provide the uh, reference inputs and um, check the outputs and of course it does this uh, production code adaptation of existing production code for the Autosar platform and also for the binaries. <clears throat> so these are screenshots from Autosar Builder. This is when, where you select for which production code you want to expand it or add respective code to make it compatible with Autosar platform and this is how this looks like then uh, the component, the Autosar component. It's an Autosar editing tool, Autosar Builder, so you can do all the kind of editing uh, for Autosar components. It's uh, rather complex. You can really edit your Autosar component. You can do the same also with uh, Target Link. They also provide Autosar. And the second thing is TPT. It's a, a well-established tool for testing and automotive, and they target all kinds of ecosystems and platforms. Yeah? So uh, they have integration also, again, uh, to DSpace uh, to work together with them. They have uh, Autosar, they have uh, ASAM standards, they have all kinds of things that you may encounter. And the important message here is, again, it's a tool that is uh, certified uh, for the automotive industry. Uh, and that's always the important thing that you can say, okay, we do a certified thing. And essentially it takes a behavior model container and it picks production code container and then it uses the manifest of the production code to instantiate this for testing on your target platform. This could be a software in the loop, uh, this could be uh, really deployed on the uh, hardware platform. And then we have something in the pipe because we got a request. The thing we have in the pipe is uh, if you know FMPI and FMI kit for Simulink, uh, you already have an idea what is coming. So uh, Torsten Sommer is working on supporting EFMI to Simulink uh, support from FMPI. So you can uh, import your EFMU in Simulink environment and um, can then use the Simulink ecosystem to compile and target and so on. There are two ways to do it. The one is to export as a source code FMU and then you basically don't think about the EFMU part further and go via FMI kit for Simulink with source, source code FMU. That has the drawback that you would go via the FMI interface. So we have to make a wrapper around that's the FMI interface and then goes to the target code. That's stupid. We want to avoid that wrapper. So another mode is that we use the C color block and Simulink 
to go directly via the production code interface. That is in the pipe. Torsten tested these uh, cross checks here from use we have, and it looks good. And I think uh, we will soon have a release in FMPy for this. This is for this part. These are two other tools, the one commercial, or two commercial Autosub Builder and TPT, and uh, this last part will be uh, open sourced. I mean, if you go on the Autosub uh, platform, right, you avoid MATLAB Simulink. This is very much a question for, for which domain do you want to generate uh, code, EFMI code. So far we looked a lot into automotive. If there are requests for other domains, we have to look into that and then provide tool support for it. But this is the tool support we have, essentially. But I see no, no trouble, so to say, because when I look at the production code like targeting producers or also Cartier ESP, this is very portable code. It's very self-contained um, and mostly boils down to put some wrappers or something around to system integrate it. You told us a little bit about the next steps, but could you give us an idea of maybe longer term? Maybe, you know, where, where do you see this in two, three, four years? Ooh. So, most importantly, you want at some point to release a specification, <laughs> one zero. So, this is hopefully not in three to four years. <laughs> but uh, you will see the main reason why it takes us so long is we want to make sure it works. Because the EFMI tool chain is only worth something if if that works. So it's not like a specification you write and put it in the public and then you hope for the best. There has to be tool support for the whole tool chain. But in the long term uh, perspective, I think the, the main objective would be twofold. The one is to encourage more modeling tools to target EFMI because there are not many. In fact, it's Daimler, right? We have some other uh, prototypes uh, from Emphasis. Um, but the prototypes didn't make it to the final product, so it's not released like in Simulation X. So if you use Simulation X, bother them. Ask them why is it not in your main branch, because they could put it in the main branch. But it's a question that they get this pressure, so to speak. That's one target, and the other more important focus from my perspective is to support the system integration on more platforms. Right. So I think we are good with targeting uh, where we have A2L and all these things. But at the end of the day, if we target another domain, we need the respective tooling for the uh, system integration. And to target as much as possible there, that I would say is a long-term uh, objective. And then we have some objectives for this upcoming uh, research project and open scaling, which uh, I mentioned already to have a foreign function interface. Then we are looking into if you um, combine with neural networks, where you have like your physics simulation together with the neural network, how to support this from the EFMI side. That's a thing uh, that will be a topic, but we have to see what comes out there. Yeah, you know, one of your early slides, you said you want to move away from the model of the super expert, but the challenge here is it's a very, very broad subject. Yes, 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 yes. You know, you are a super expert. No, 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 I'm not a super expert. No, 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 no. If I see this embedded two chains, I, <laughs> because uh, just setting it up takes ages. So I had a few assessments where we had to set up uh, such a two chain. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It takes longer than the actual system to creation. No issue where you're half an hour, you have your production code integrated, but setting up just a two chain, you're a week. Yeah, but maybe just to add to this point, I mean, what we are doing is that we are playing superhero uh, by having the whole two chain on our machine. And I mean, the vision is that at some point you can say, well, this two chain is established. If you have one department taking care of the embedded part and the other group is more taking about the modeling part and then they can cooperate. But bringing this to life is a long way to go still. So that's for sure. I like to thank you and try the stuff. You got the software. You can play with it. Look into it and try it out. Thank you very much for joining.